It has been a fantastic Tour de France so far, and stage 20 looks set to be somewhat of an encore to what has been a brutal race. The GC battle has been hotly contested over the last three weeks, but whether or not stage 20 proves to be decisive for the overall classification is actually irrelevant. Nobody can start to think about the processional ride into Paris until they cross the finish line in Val 130 kilometers over three mountain passes and nearly 5,000 meters of climbing. No matter how you look at it, stage 20 is going to be an epic. So the stage hasn't actually even started yet and already we're going uphill. On stage 20 on tired legs, this is not going to be the most enjoyable neutralized zone. We've got a kilometer to go to the start and I'm pretty sure it's all uphill. So here we are. According to the commute route that I made and put on my Wahoo, this is the start of stage 20 of the Tour de France. 131 kilometers, three mountain passes and just under 5,000 meters of climbing. It's gonna be a tough one. Albertville is a more frequent stage host at the Tour de France than Val Thorens, the stage finish, although this will only be its fifth ever stage start. And all of those have been since 1998, so it is quite a recent addition. Right, the valley road is over. That was 18 kilometers of gentle ups and downs. On the whole, it was pretty fast though. Certainly having a tailwind did help a little bit. The surfaces were changeable, quite a bit of new tarmac actually in different places, which made it quite a nice road to start the day on. That's all changed now though, as we're now on the lower slopes of the Cormet de Rousselon, which rises to 1968 meters over the next 19 kilometers. And it really saps your speed. At this stage on the climb, I should be getting worried because my legs hurt, I'm suffering, and it says there are still 13 kilometers remaining. But luckily, four kilometers of that are pretty much pan flat at the top. I mean, pan flat as close to that as you get in a mountain range. I only have 700 meters of elevation left to gain, which actually isn't too bad. Cormet du Rosalon is a climb of two parts, and as you may be able to tell, I've made it to the top of part one, which is 1,605 meters to the summit of Col de Marie, or however the locals pronounce it. The average gradient for the entire climb is only 6%, which isn't steep, but you do have to factor in that the next section actually drops down a little bit, so the ramps are in fact quite a bit steeper than 6%. A climb of two parts. The main climb is the Col du Murier, but there is a continuation after this all category climb of a further four kilometers to the Cormet de Rousselon. Used nine times in the history of La Tour, this summit is reached after 20 kilometers of uphill. It is by no means easy, having already climbed 1,247 meters in one hit. Whilst not overly well known as a climb, there is a famous picture from 1996 of Johan Brunil crashing into a ravine on the descent. That day was also famous for being the day Miguel Indurain would finally crack whilst attempting to win a sixth Tour de France. Right, that's climb number one, Cormet de Rousselon out of the way. 1968 meters, climbing just over 1200 meters in one hit. Yes, there are a couple of gentle plateaus, but if you're in the Gruppetto, that just means you're gonna to have to try even harder to catch back up. We've got a long descent now to the Cat 2 climb, which is the second climb of the day. If you're in the Gruppetto, this just means you're gonna be chasing really, really hard. And if you're at the front of the race, you're gonna be trying equally hard to make sure the difference you've made on climb number one is sustained. So we've come into a slightly more technical section here, but further up the mountain, it was open, it was fast, the surface was good. I would not be at all surprised if we don't hear riders doing in excess of 120 kilometers an hour.
The second climb of today's stage, Côte de Longfoy, and it was 6.6 kilometers at 6.5%, which doesn't sound that bad, but that is a little deceiving as the ramps in between the false flats were actually really quite hard. And when you consider there was a headwind today, it made it a really tough climb. The only good thing though, is it had a really nice surface, which actually made it quite easy to find a nice rhythm and ride up the climb. There's now 50 kilometers to go, but 33 of those do indeed go uphill. The previous descent was absolutely amazing. It was technical, it was fast, open at the top, and then tighter at the bottom. This one is far more engaging, and you cannot take your eye off the ball for a single second. The road is constantly changing camber, changing direction, changing gradient, but more than that, the surface is constantly changing. We've had a few bits which have been immaculate smooth tarmac, but on the whole, we've actually got cracked and creased asphalt with lots of gravel, lots of debris, and it makes it for quite a tricky ride. Velteren is the final climb in this year's Tour de France, a record-breaking 30th mountain summit too. And it could prove decisive to the overall outcome of the event. 33 kilometers at five and a half percent. Although, when you do discount the slight descent lower down the mountain, that average gradient is then in fact nearer 7%. Oh, and if you like trivia, Val happens to be the highest ski resort in Europe at 2,365 meters. But before I can show you that, I still have to ride up the mountain. After three weeks of racing, 200 riders have been competing for 21 stages. This is the last realistic chance for a select few to take their victory. A tall order, indeed. Is it conceivable that a break could stay away to the finish? I don't think so. Instead, will we see a final challenge for the overall title take place? I think it's more likely. And here we are, the final meters of the final climb in the 2019 Tour de France, just above the highest ski resort in Europe. Valtoren at 2,635 meters. Will it prove to be decisive? We won't find out until on the day, but one thing is for sure, it is an epic finale to what will have been an epic bike race. That final kilometer at just over 9% was a real sting in the tail. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't appreciate it. Valtoren has only once before featured in La Tour de France, and that was back in 1994 when Colombian Nelson Rodriguez was the victor. Will we see a 100% Colombian record on this climb? I think we might. Let us know your stage predictions down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Tour de France content, click on your screen now.